Welcome to the Northeast Regional Library. All right. I'm Lee Birchfield. I'm the director of the Louisville Free Public Library, and I'm only going to say a few words because we have a great program this morning. Uh, there are so many people that have to be thanked, and I'm going to make sure that before we're done, all of them have been thanked, but I'm not going to start with that. I'm going to start by just saying, uh, for those of you who don't know, this has been uh, a project that's been at least 17 years in the making. In 2001, uh, the, a, a newly hired library director commissioned a, a study of Louisville and its needs for libraries and produced about a 300-page uh, long-range master facilities plan. If you're interested in reading it, see me after we're done here. I'll, I'll see if I can't get you a copy of it. Uh, seven, it. And that was the first time that the idea of, of building a series of three regional libraries to help serve uh, the population, the growing population of Jefferson County had ever been mentioned. Uh, in 2002, that was revised and updated, and then again in 2008. So if you go back to 2001, 18 years ago, leaders in this city had a vision for what could happen. It's a long history with lots of people who stepped in and filled their role, and, um, and we're here today because of a consistent commitment in this community and among its leaders to libraries, and this is what can happen when people work together and don't give up on a dream. So thank you for being here today. <clears throat> We're we're going to start our program with the National Anthem, and we have a high school student from Ballard High, Sydney Bond, who's going to come and sing for us. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the brave and the home of the Wow. So, so I had heard a rumor uh, that Sydney was a little nervous before singing for us, and I just want to say if I could sing like that, I would sing anywhere, anytime, and I would never be nervous. I, I can't sing like that. So I, I mentioned that a lot of people over the years had picked up the torch and carried it, and that that was one of the reasons that we are able to be here today for this great occasion. Well, for the last nine years, one of the torchbearers, maybe the chief torchbearer for the cause of libraries in Jefferson County, has talked about lifelong learning everywhere he goes. He's built it into his strategic vision for the city, and he has shown unwavering commitment to helping the library achieve its goals and to provide world-class library services for this community. I'm so glad that I am able today to be here to introduce him to you. Please welcome Mayor Greg Fisher. Good morning, everybody. How do you like our new library? <laughs> know if you're like me, when you drive up here, you just kind of go, wow. This looks like a really nice place. And wait till you get inside. It's even nicer inside. So I want to thank everybody for coming out here today. We've got a lot of uh, elected officials with us. I just want to recognize them before I start. You'll be hearing from our councilwoman whose district we're in here in a second, Marilyn Parker. Uh, Bill Hollander is with us. Anthony Piangentini. Uh, Paula McCraney. Uh, Marcus Winkler. Mayor Tanini from uh, the city of St. Matthews, 
And I want to recognize former Councilman Glenn Stucco over here who was with us to help make this library a reality as well. If I left anybody else out, I'm, I'm sorry, but welcome to all of our elected officials for the good work that you all do every day. Think about, I mean, the question to ask is, what is the price of a good public library? What does it mean to people? What's it mean to have a source of learning and imagination and community? Legendary writer Maya Angelou said, I always felt in any town, if I can get to a library, I'll be okay. Young adult author Libba Bray said, the library card is a passport to wonders and miracles, glimpses into other lives, religions, experiences, the hopes and dreams and strivings of all human beings. And Albert Einstein, in one of his famous quotes, said, the only thing that you absolutely have to know is the location of a library. So it's a thrill and an honor to be here at the site of the newest location of the Louisville Free Public Library. From my first day in office, I said that one of my primary goals would be to make Louisville an even greater city of lifelong learning. And my team and I knew from the beginning in 2011, even though we were still emerging from the Great Recession, that we had to invest in our Louisville Free, free Public Library system. When you think about what our libraries do, they're hubs for learning. They also embody our city value of compassion as well. That's because a compassionate city provides opportunities to all Louisvillians to make sure they can learn and realize their full human potential. That's what libraries provide every single day with free access to information on job and education opportunities, online and in-person classes, workshops, author lectures, and they serve as great community gathering points. That's why when we started, we thought it would be very important to work with all of our citizens to make sure our library would be as great as they could be. So we worked with citizens in Shively, PRP, Valley Station, and elsewhere to design this spectacular Southwest Regional Library that was opened in 2014. It's been a huge success with patrons and was even recognized by USA Today as one of the 25 must-see buildings in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. We followed many of the same design and planning principles in creating the South Central Library, which we opened in Oklahoma in 2017. We use green building construction methods and materials, and the buildings are designed to save energy and preserve the existing green space around them. And the community feedback on the South Central Regional Library has been fantastic. Attendance grew by 80%, and materials checked out grew by more than 170%. So it is clear that Louisvillians love our libraries. That's why it's deeply gratifying for me and so many people here today to see the Northeast Regional Library come to life here today. This is almost an $18 million investment. Most of that came from you all, the citizens of Louisville. This library also fulfills my commitment under the library master plan to provide a full service library within five miles of 90% of Louisville's residents. And it's an outstanding compliment to the recently reopened and expanded St. Matthew's E-Line Library, which we partnered with the City of St. Matthew's and Mayor Tanini and his council to complete as part of their renovation of their city hall space. Be sure to check that out if you haven't seen it yet. It's very, very nice. Now obviously too, I just want to say a little bit about the elephant in the room. There's a bittersweet quality to this because everybody here knows we're facing a difficult budget challenge because of the Kentucky retirement system driven increase in our pension bill. The library is sharing those challenges and we're going to have to wait to see what happens tomorrow with the final council vote. But one thing is very clear, our community is very passionate about our libraries. And I share that passion and I hope in the future we will find ways to increase revenue so we can, can continue to have a thriving library system. Now on this library here, this provides an unparalleled range of services for patrons. Big building, 36,000 square feet. A lot of books, 120,000 books and other materials. Public meeting rooms an innovative hands-on maker space with an audio-visual lab and a demonstration kitchen. 
an outdoor teaching and programming space, a dedicated children's area, a screened-in porch, dedicated space for teens, a green room for audiovisual and media production. And the city owns all this property around here, formerly known as the Belvoir Estate. We've created walking paths, a Quills coffee shop will open here later this summer, and at some point we'll restore the Belvoir historic home as part of this campus as well. And we're right across from the Northeast YMCA, which will make this a destination where families can come, get their exercise, then drop by their library to get a little mind exercise as well and check out some books. So this campus area around here really brings all of our core city values together. Health, lifelong learning, and compassion, all in a, within a couple hundred yards. So this is the culmination of years of work by so many people. I want to thank our Metro Council for their partnership to make sure we get this done properly. I want to thank our partners in Frankfurt. They contributed $4.1 million in a state grant to help build this library. Special thanks to Terry Manuel, Commissioner and State Librarian from the Kentucky Department of Libraries and Archives. I also want to thank Steve Galt, good looking gentleman over here to my far right, who we'll hear from in a moment, and everyone at the Louisville Library Foundation, including Bill Dunbar, Monty Boyd, Melanie Scott, Stuart Steinbach, and Orm Wilson. They raised private funds to put the cherry on the top to make this thing one of the great libraries in the country. Also, I want to thank Mayor Brent Hagen of Linden, who's over here. We'll hear from him as well and the members of the Linden City Council. I want to thank them for contrib contributing a half million dollars to the project through a gift to the Library Foundation. And lastly, as I close, I want to thank Lee Birchfield for his leadership and the dedicated, hardworking, and compassionate professionals who work for the Louisville Free Public Library System. This has been a real time of kind of emotions and yo-yo emotions for our library employees or you know, seeing libraries open, seeing libraries close, hours change, and I appreciate you and the team for your professionalism each and every day. Because one of the reasons the people of Louisville love our libraries, I know, is because of the dedica dedicated library we have at each one of our locations. Let's hear it for our library employees here. And you'll see the staff of this library waiting back here in their blue t-shirts. They are ready to go, and uh, they are quite proud. So in closing, it takes all of us coming together, obviously, to do anything great, work hard to make something like this happen. The Northeast Regional Library is something that generations of Louisville, Louisvillians will enjoy and will benefit from. So let's remember, let's keep working together to do great things for the great people of our wonderful city of Louisville, Kentucky. Thanks, everybody, for coming out today. Next, we're going to hear from Steve Galt, who is the chair of the Library Foundation Board of Directors, uh, but for this particular project uh, was the leader of the capital fundraising campaign that raised $3.8 million to, to help, as Mayor Fisher said, to, to make this, instead of being a a municipal building to make this really a show place. And those of you that haven't already sneaked inside, you'll see what I'm talking about. Please help me welcome Steve Gall. Thank you, Lee, Mayor Fisher. Um, I see all the wonderful children out here today, so I'm gonna be relatively brief because I know they're wanting to get in there and get after it <laughs> and not listen to, to an old man here. Uh, but good morning, I'm Steve Gault, I'm the board chair of the Library Foundation, and welcome to all of you as we celebrate the opening of your spectacular Northeast Regional Library. Uh, what you're experiencing here this morning is a result of meticulous planning, innovative design and architecture, exacting construction management, and funding by way of a great public-private partnership 14 million coming from public funders and 3.8 million in private dollars from the campaign for the Northeast Regional Library conducted by the Library Foundation. I wanna give Mayor Fisher a special thank you for his decision to dedicate this entire 13.5 acre tract of land 
to the Northeast Regional Library project. Uh, as a result, we have magnific a magnificent park-like setting and opportunities for outdoor and recreational activities in the years ahead. Private gifts to the Louisville Free Public Library from the Library Foundation fund what I call a margin of excellence that provides the best in library resources, furnishings, displays, technology, and programming, that extra quality that makes good libraries into great libraries like you deserve here at the Northeast Regional. Uh, I also want to take a moment to, to give a special thanks to Pat Meehan, president of the Friends of the Northeast Regional Library, for his energy and enthusiasm surrounding this project. And I know you're here, Pat, but I don't know where you are. Thank you. Enjoy your new regional library. Thanks. It's been a privilege, privilege to be a part. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Steve. You did a great job of dodging the train horn there. Uh, I, I want to convey uh, regrets from Terry Manuel, who is our state librarian. Terry was planning to be here today, but had some car trouble and wasn't able to get here yet from Frankfurt. He is still planning to be here, so maybe he'll make it before some of you leave and you can get a chance to say hello to him. Uh, next, I want to introduce uh, Mayor Brent Hagen from the City of Linden. The City of Linden made a, a gracious donation to uh, the library, which we used to purchase the majority of the books that you will find on the shelves uh, inside the library. Uh, so we're very happy to welcome Mayor Hagen today. Well, welcome to Linden, everyone. So it's been said, but I'd want to begin by thanking the Linden City Council for approving a half a million dollar grant to purchase these books here in the library. Three years ago, council members Carla Nally, Marty Sidebottom, Becky Ricketts, Betsy Kramer, Kelly Kramer, Cami Popham, and Dustin Gilchrist saw this as an opportunity to invest in the future of Linden and its surrounding communities. A future that will see many people come and go, most with smiles on their faces and hopefully something learned. I would also like to thank city employees Sonia Kaiser and Stacy Woodward. Sonia is the city treasurer and she has spent many hours recording a couple hundred invoices and um, Enjoyed, we also enjoyed having an inside look at the many hundred thousand books that are available here today. So this regional library is something Linden has been looking forward to for years. Uh, with its ultra-modern design, park-like atmosphere, and many wonderful interior spaces, this is a place for community members to join together, share new experiences, and expand their horizons. It's an honor to have this library in Linden, and we hope that you use this space. Schedule meetings here, meet people for coffee, bring the kids for story time, find a quiet place to write, or watch a cooking demonstration. You could even check out a book. So thank you all again for joining us here in Linden today. This is a wonderful asset. Uh, I will be here as much as I can, definitely, and can't wait to meet many of you here as well. So thank you again, and let's cut the ribbon. Okay, we, we are almost there. It's almost time to cut the ribbon. Now, when we do, we're going to ask the kids to come up. Not yet, but, but in just a moment, we're going to ask the kids to come up and stand with us while we cut the ribbon. So start making your way up for that. Uh, I did say that I had a number of people that I wanted to thank. So this is going to be like that last... Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry, Councilwoman Parker. Okay, we had a, we had a, a schedule change because... Um, Terry Manuel wasn't here, and I apologize. I almost skipped Councilwoman Marilyn Parker. Please help me welcome Councilwoman Marilyn Parker. This is her district. I am so sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Sometimes I just have to insert myself, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, I am very excited to have such a great amenity in District 18. Uh, this is one of the most beautiful libraries I have ever seen, and it's not going to just be used by District 18 residents. There is going to be folks coming to this library from all over town, and 
It's in a beautiful setting. It's in a great location. It's right next to A.B. Sawyer Park and the Northeast YMCA. And what I was telling folks last night, families can come to this section of town and they can enjoy the park, which the Republican Caucus has invested a lot of money in. You can spend hours at the Y and you can come over and it's just a, a full body, mind, and soul experience for a family to come over here. And when you walk inside, you are just going to be amazed at the, the use of architecture for beauty. I walked in last night and I thought, boy, this looks like, you know, the, the, the meeting room or the lobby of the Omni Hotel in here. It's just gorgeous. And the use of the windows for nature, whether you come and you sit in these seats and you're reading a book or a computer, whether it's raining, whether it's snowing, whether the sun is shining, you are just going to be in a very peaceful place with learning and nature, and it's going to be very awesome. And I don't want to leave the podium without uh, mentioning there were three council people that have been pushing for a master plan of the libraries for six, about 16, 12 years, and that was Councilman Glenn Stuckel, Councilman um, um, Glenn Stuckel, C Kevin Kramer, and Jerry Miller. Glenn Stuckel is here today, and I ask if he can have uh, a few minutes to speak because he was very instrumental in the library master plan, and um, he's our former council, council person of District 17, awesome person, and you need to hear just for a minute from him. Thank you. Good morning. This is a very emotional time for me. Back in uh, 2002, when we merged our government, uh, I made one of my priorities a site for the new library. And almost on a, a weekly basis, I would call up Craig Buto, who was the director, and I'd say, hey, and Craig is here. Craig, come on up here so everybody can see you. Come, come on up. Yeah. Anyway, I would call Craig, and I'd say, I think I found a spot. And I, naturally, it was in District 17. And he'd go look at it, and he'd say, no, Glenn, this isn't going to do. We, we need something that, you know. Well, after about two years, I sort of gave up on it, not knowing that this prime spot was available. And now I look, and I see, obviously, uh, this isn't very popular. Look at the crowd out here. No, nobody came, right? But I want you to know how deeply moved I am to see this to come to fruition. Even though I'm not on the council any longer, this has been a dream of mine for a long time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so, so I have this list here. I'm just gonna, gonna go through this. Uh, I first want to thank our national anthem guest, Sydney Bond. She did a great job this morning. As I said earlier, Mayor Fisher has, has done a great job uh, carrying the torch for libraries. Melanie McCoy is here. She's the chair of the Library Advisory Commission, which is our citizen advisory board. Uh, Chandra Gordon, uh, the executive director of the Library Foundation. Steve Galt, the chair of the board. And all of the members of the foundation board who worked diligently to help raise funding for this. Pam Greenwell is here somewhere. Pam is the... the uh, chair of our council of friends and all of the friends groups from all of the branches are such great advocates for the library we really appreciate them this art this library was designed by a partnership between uh, the ms and r design team uh, which is a group out of minnesota and local group jra architects matthew krunterad and colin drake uh, are the leaders of those teams and they've just done an outstanding job designing this they designed this library and and placed it on this property to minimize the number of trees that would have to be removed and to sort of pay homage out the back through the windows to the beauty to the beauty of the site and they've done a fantastic job the louisville metro council and uh, has has done a great job of staying focused on the library master plan through years of, uh, 
of surplus and through years of deficit, and I'm grateful to them for their long-term commitment. I also have to thank our library team. Matt Frazier is our, uh, our former manager of design and construction. Uh, he retired partway through the project, so we found a way to keep him involved. Uh, Doug Foster is the current manager of design and construction. Jody Hampton leads our content management department. They purchased over 120,000 items for this library. It's the largest single purchasing project we've ever had. When we opened Southwest, we had a collection we brought. When we opened South Central, we had a collection we brought from Okalona. 120,000 new items. They have done outstanding work getting this ready. And then Rachel Smith is the leader of our staff. They've, they've disappeared because they've gone inside to get ready for you all to rush the doors here in just a moment. I also have to thank some folks who were involved in this project in the past. Like I said, 17 years, people come, they work, they do great work, and then they move on. But I want to recognize a few of them. Former Mayor Jerry Abramson did a great job of helping the library find sites to build these libraries on. Um, Craig Buteau and Jim Blanton, both former library directors, are here somewhere. We know we found Craig. He, we got him to come to the front. Jim should be here somewhere. Uh, and then, of course, Brent Hagen and the city of Linden. Thank you all very much. This doesn't happen without a host of people, some of whom get recognized and some of whom don't, and most of those are going to be library staff, and they'll tell me about it later. Let's have the kids come up. Let's cut the ribbon, and let's open this library. Thank you all.